This is Rose Du from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Today, I'll be talking about endovascular interventions for head and neck pathology. These include vascular or bleeding tumors, carotid blowouts, extracranial arterial venous malformations or arterial venous fistulas, and epistaxis. Preoperative or palliative embolization for vascular or bleeding tumors can be done. Vascular tumors are most frequently encountered for embolization are paragangliomas and juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibromas. Head and neck cancers are mostly squamous cell carcinomas. Paragangliomas are neoplasms that develop from neural crest elements that contribute to the development of autonomic nervous system. The most common locations are carotid body tumors, glomus jugulari, glomus tympanicum, and glomus tympagali. 90% of these are benign. The gold standard here uh, for treatment would be total surgical resection. Ethylene vinyl alcohol, uh, also known as onyx, is often used for preoptive embolization. The most frequently embolized vessels are the ascending pharyngeal artery, posterior auricular artery, and occipital artery. 64 to 95% of the tumor can be devascularized using embolization with complications occurring in one to 38% and cranial nerve injuries occurring in one to 28%. Juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibromas or JNA for short accounts for half percent of all head and neck tumors. These usually occur in males ages 14 to 17. They're benign tumors that are locally aggressive and arise from the lateral margin of the uh, posterior nasal cavity near the sphenopalatine foramen. They're typically supplied by branches of the IMAX the ascending pharyngeal artery, and the accessory meningeal artery. Treatment here is with preoperative embolization followed by surgical removal. Head and neck cancers can occur in the oral cavity, nasal pharynx, hypopharynx, oropharynx, or the larynx. Palliative embolization for bleeding from unresectable recurrent or metastatic tumor head and neck cancers are done 60 to 95 percent of the vascularization can be achieved in the tumors with uh, control of uncontrolled bleeding in nearly all cases. Rebleeding can occur anywhere from two weeks to 20 months after embolization. Neurological complications such as stroke or cranial nerve injuries can occur in one to five percent. This is an example of a carotid body tumor. It's a 49-year-old woman presented with a left neck mass, as you can see here on the chrono view of the CTA. A common carotid injection demonstrated the tumor blush. The tumor is mainly fed by the occipital artery, which underwent uh, embolization with ethylene vinyl alcohol. And here you can see that 80% of the tumor had been devascularized. The patient then underwent surgical resection uh, Successfully, this is the post-operative CTA. Uh, she had no neurological deficit from this. This is an example of a juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. It's a 15-year-old male with recurrent JNA, SAS post previous embolization, presented with recurrent tumor, as you can see here on the MRI. The uh, preoperative angiogram demonstrated uh, that the, the tumor is mainly fed by the IMAX, he therefore underwent um, embolization uh, with PVA into the right sphenopalatine artery. This is the post-embolization uh, angiogram demonstrating significant decrease in the tumor blush. This is an example of a 70-year-old man with vocal cord squamous cell carcinoma who had undergone radiation and resection, who now presented with recurrent bleeding from a left neck mass, resulting in both hypotension and requiring large amounts of transfusion. This is uh, an angiogram demonstrating no active extravasation. Uh, the patient had undergone nasal packing. However, um, one can see the tumor blush and the tumor, the tumor mainly fed by the left facial artery. The patient therefore underwent embolization of the left facial artery with a coil, coil and also with ethylene vinyl alcohol, uh, liquid embolic. This is the post-embolization angiogram demonstrating a significant decrease of the tumor blush. The patient had no further hemorrhage uh, at two-month follow-up. Crowded blowouts is one of the most dreaded complications of uh, head and neck cancers. It is defined as a rupture of the extracranial carotid or its branches and occurs in about 6 to 10% of patients with advanced head and neck cancer. 
typically occurs several months after irradiation with a very high morbidity and mortality of 60 and 40% respectively. Open surgery is technically challenging here and they are typically treated with embolization, such as coil occlusion of the parent or the bleeding vessel or the use of covered stents. Covered stents are metal stents that are covered by a fabric or a graft material such as PTFE. Perioperative mortality uh, in carotid uh, blowout uh, embolization ranges from 5 to 17%, with perioperative stroke ranging from 1 to 6%. Rebleeding is quite high uh, and can range from 19 to 36%. However, uh, there is technical success in essentially all cases of 100%. Uh, mean survival of these patients are approximately uh, any ranges anywhere from 7 to 13 months. This is an example of a 67-year-old man with laryngeal cancer and tongue squamous cell carcinoma who had undergone resection and radiation therapy who now presents with oral pharyngeal bleed resulting in hypotension and requiring a transfusion. A common carotid injection demonstrates pseudoaneurysm in the common carotid. He therefore underwent placement of a covered stent, as you can see here along the yellow arrow, this is the post-stent angel uh, demonstrating resolution of, this, uh, of the pseudoaneurysm. He had no further bleeding at one month follow-up. Extracranial AVMs and AVFs um, uh, constitute 5% of all AVMs. And of these, 50% are in the head and neck region. They usually detected at birth, 40% uh, are detected at birth, they're typically progressive with the average age for progression at approximately 12.7 years. Extracranial AVMs uh, may be focal or diffused. Surgical resection should be for those with focal AVMs. Endovascular treatment can be transarterial, transvenous, or direct percutaneous puncture. Embolization uh, of proximal fetus should be performed with care because of possible subsequent recruitment of collaterals and you know, if the AVM is not totally surgically resected, an occlusion of the proximal feeders that can block future embolizations. Alcohol embolization with direct percutaneous um, embolization is most effective of all the different endovascular techniques with 74 to 100% efficacy, but with a high complication rate of 24 to 48%. Recurrence rate after surgery embolization is also quite high, up to 80%, and can, can occur up to 10 years later. This is an example of a 19-year-old man with a left craniofacial AVM that is diffuse. He had undergone uh, multiple embolizations and coilings with, and now presents with copious bleeding from his left cheek, uh, right about that region there. He underwent a direct percutaneous injection with ethanol and 3% STS under uh, continuous ultrasound guidance. And this is, uh, uh, two months post-treatment. He had no further bleeding episodes after that. Epistaxis is common, uh, with a prevalence of approximately 60% in the general adult population, but only 6% of these cases require treatment. Idiopathic epistaxis accounts for the vast majority of cases, and the phenopalatine artery is usually responsible for refractory epistaxis. The first line of treatment for epistaxis is packing, cautery, or the use of topical agents. In refractory cases, either endoscopic sphenopalatine artery lication can be performed or endovascular embolization. The identification uh, with embolization, the identification of correct vascular territory can be difficult as two thirds of uh, these have normal angiograms. And therefore, empirical embolization is usually done, typically of bilateral sphenopalatine or distal IMAX. The immediate success rate here, meaning of a con immediate control of bleeding, is high at 90%. However, there's also a high rebleed rate in a third of the patient, with a quarter of these uh, patients rebleeding within one week. The major complication rate of embolization here is 2 to 4% and includes stroke, cranial nerve injury, or skin necrosis. Embolization, uh, therefore, has a higher complication rate and higher rebleed rate than surgical ligation. Complications from endovascular treatment of head and neck pathologies include cranial nerve injury, 
stroke, skin mucosa, or tongue necrosis, as well as recurrent hemorrhage. Uh, the reason for this uh, has to do with the embolic material agents that are used, and they include particulate embolics, such as polyvinyl alcohol, or PVA for short, which can have distal penetration depending on the size of the particles. These are really loosened and can dissipate over time. Liquid embolics are also used and can include glue, such as NBCA, which is radio-opaque and permanent, or ethylene vinyl alcohol, also known as onyx, for deep penetration. These can be injected more slowly and therefore more accurately. Fibrin sponge and coils can also be used. Complications occur mainly because of anastomic channels between the ECA and ICA, and also because of the cranial nerve supply by branches of the ECA. The non-visualized small anastomic channels usually range from 50 to 80 microns. Therefore, the use of particles greater than 150 microns will avoid uh, these channels being entered. In very high flow cases or uh, high shunting, particles of 500 to 700 microns can be used to further avoid the, um, the entering the small anastomotic channels. Liquid embolics, however, can enter channels, uh, all of these small channels as well, and therefore must be used with care. There are some techniques uh, for preventing embolic material from entering anastomotic channels, especially if they can be visualized. Proximal occlusion of the collateral with coils prior to embolization can be done. Proximal balloon occlusion of the target ECA branch to affect flow reversal from the ICA to ECA can also be done. In summary, endovascular intervention is a useful technique in the treatment of head and neck tumors carotid blowouts, extracranial AVMs, AVFs, and epistaxis. It can be used as a preoperative adjunct to surgery or palliatively in tumors and AV shunts. Complications are largely due to ECA to ICA anastomoses and ECA supply to cranial nerves. Therefore, care must be taken to meticulously examine angiograms prior to embolizations. Thank you.